Hi, this is Charlie Calvert, and I thought I'd talk a little bit about passing arrays as an argument to a method or about retrieving an array from a method, returning an array from a method. So suppose we had a task. We wanted to get evenly divisible numbers and place them in an array. So suppose we declared an array um, here, and we'll call it uh, evenly divisible numbers, say. And we'll um, fill it in by writing a method called get evenly divisible numbers, right? And we'll pass in the number of numbers we want. We'll say we want five of them, and we want them evenly divisible by some value, let's say uh, uh, 12. And now we're going to use refactoring here. We'll press control dot to create the method that we want to uh, perform this task. And now, as you can see, we have a method called get evenly, evenly divisible numbers and um, it's passed uh, two parameters here and it throws a not implemented exception. Now let's start with this. What is this not implemented exception? This is C Sharp's way of telling you, well I've created a method for you but um, you still need to implement it. So if you try to run this program it'll blow up and it'll say this method's not implemented. Not implemented exception was unhandled. So it's telling you you need to implement this method. It's C Sharp's way of friendly little way of telling you to implement the method. So we'll implement the method right here. And to begin with, we'll just return null so that we uh, can not have any errors here. Then the next thing we might want to approach here is this whole idea of the parameters that parameter names that C Sharp came up with. And P is not a very good um, value. So we'll say, why don't we call it limit? That's how many numbers we want in our array and this is the divisor that we want to test for, test with to see if our number of our array has evenly divisible numbers in it. So uh, we've gone ahead and made those changes there and I, I uh, think we're still debugging here so why don't we stop that process and then why don't we go ahead and see if we can't well we'll, we'll keep that part of it here so we don't get an error because we're not returning a value and let's see if we can't think about how to solve this problem. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create an array of evenly divisible numbers. And we'll make that an array of integer. And we'll make it the size that we defined here, the limit, the number that they want to pass in. And then we'll write some code which will allow us to um, <clears throat> fill in this array. And we'll take maybe more than one stab at this. So let's go ahead and and do it one way the first time. We'll go ahead and we'll declare an index here, which will allow us to index into our array. And then we'll declare a variable count um, that will allow us to uh, test for numbers that might fit in our array, might be evenly divisible by our divisor. So we want this thing um, to be. Um, We want, our, we, we want to be in a situation where, I think, let's see what we want to do. We want to make sure that our index um, is always smaller than or equal to the limit. Um, but we want to be careful here because we have zero you know, uh, based arrays. So we want to actually limit minus 1. Okay. And then there's, there's more than one way to solve this problem. But why don't we start out here by doing it this way. We'll say if count. Um, is evenly divisible by whatever the divisor is. So that's how we say that. We say we use the modulus operator and if we say if our number count is evenly divisible by the divisor, in other words if it returns um, a remainder of zero then we know we've got one of the numbers we want. So inside of here what we'll do is we'll say that our evenly divisible numbers that we've created and then we'll have our index in here and we'll keep incrementing our index each time and we'll set it equal to count okay so now we were able to kind of fill in the numbers in this array right with the values that we want and now we don't have to return null anymore we know what we want to return we want to return our array of evenly divisible numbers okay so we finished writing this method we 
here's the indoor up here, right? This is the entrance to the method. Here's the indoor, and we pass in two values, two parameters. So we specify the arguments we want to pass into this method. Then C sharp goes into the rabbit hole, into the mystery place. It disappears for a moment, and then we pop out over here. And then limit will be set equal to 5 and divisor will be set equal to 12 because we're passing these two parameters in, these two arguments into this method. And then we use both of them here in our program. And we want to see if it's actually working. So we'll create another method here and we'll display our, our array and we'll pass in our evenly divisible numbers array and see if it's doing what we want it to do. Again, we press control dot. We use the refactoring tools built into C sharp to automatically create our, our method for us. And then now we want to display that array. And again, we don't, we can get rid of the not implemented exception. And we'll use the for each method here, which is the simplest way to make sure that we're um, getting each number in our um, collection which is called evenly divisible by number and then we're simply going to um, write those out and we'll uh, display those values here so let's go ahead and run that and see what we got and we've got um, 0 12 24 36 48 that's 0 that's five numbers which are evenly divisible by 12 um, if we don't like the idea that we got zero in there, I, I suppose we could always start counting at one and then uh, we get uh, we can get rid of the zero if that's more appealing to us here. Okay, so one of the things we've done here is we've created reusable methods. So if we want to, we could um, repeat this and see other values inside of it, showing the reusability of our methods. So we'll go ahead and uh, just do a little block copy here and then we'll pass it in and this time we'll say we want to see, you know, 10 numbers evenly divisible by 27, say. And we'll display um, those extra results here. So we'll go ahead and we'll run our code and you can see that we, um, we got our first set of numbers here and then here we're seeing the second set of numbers here so that we were able to reuse the method easily. Another advantage that we have because we're creating methods is that we um, are able to say refactor our code. If we decide this isn't the ultimate way to write this method, if we instead of having to change it in two places, change it here and change it here, we can make our change in one place and we could for instance say that we want to refactor our code so we could just make some minor changes to it <clears throat> to try you know see if we can optimize our code now I, I don't believe usually in optimizing code particularly if you're a beginning level programmer most attempts to optimize your code uh, just simply end up causing more trouble than it's worth there's more projects that have been sunk by people who are attempting to optimize their code than has ever been improved by um, said efforts so um, it's usually best to uh, not optimize code unless you're really seeing a performance problem in your code and we we are definitely not seeing performance problems in our code at this time so there's no reason for us to go about trying to um, to make those kind of changes but if we wanted to then we could um, see what happens and we can run our program and here you see we were able to make our change in one place and yet get the same results which is our definition of how we refactor our code. Uh, let's talk just for a second about the key points here. Here's an example of us uh, returning a value, an array back. So here's a return value. Remember here's the outdoor of a method so it comes back out here. That's the result that gets returned by a method and here's the method and here's how we say that a method returns something and here's the indoor for a method where we pass things in and here's an example of passing an array here's an example of returning an array from a method okay main point is here remember our key virtues of writing methods uh, our reuse our ability to avoid repetition make changes in one place divide and conquer simplify our code good night now thank you guys for watching